everybody, welcome to video note 1.2, and just make sure you watch out for atoms, they make up everything. Um, so here are the things that hopefully you'll be able to do after watching this. Um, please look at these book connections, pages 84 to 88 and 96 to 100. It's fun times, peeps. There's a lot of information to help you learn chemistry. Whoa, is that a pair on there? So you saw this slide earlier in a different PowerPoint. But now you're seeing it again. Um, I just want to tell you that sometimes when I write this symbol for a proton, I put P positive. Neutrons, I sometimes put N with a not sign. Okay, negative, or not negative, <laughs> no charge. And electrons, sometimes I put E negative. So I'll be using that shorthand, but you still have to remember this information. Okay, um, again, you saw this already, but you have to label the parts and make sure you know where they are. And it's going to really come in handy. So um, these are in there. And that is right there. Okay. And then the electrons are outside. Atoms are neutral because if you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you'll also count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 electrons. So atoms are neutral. Then we have these things called ions. Ions are just like an atom. They have a nucleus with protons and neutrons. But they're not neutral, so ion means it's charged, all right? And so there are two kinds of charged particles that you're going to have to know for now. Um, besides the, the subatomic particles, if an atom loses or gains electrons, it can turn into an ion. So there's one kind of ion called a cation, and a cation is a positively charged ion. Positively, positively charged ion. So how could something turn into a cation? Well, let's look what happens. Look, this has positive charge. So we know sodium has 11 protons. Well, you don't know yet. That's what we're going to talk about. And you can't see that 11 because I wrote it in red. 11 protons. And this has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 electrons. So this is an atom. It's neutral. This has 11 protons, 11 protons, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 electrons. So overall, it's got one more proton in its nucleus than it has electrons outside the nucleus. And so it's called a positively charged ion, which has a special name, cat ion. All right. Um, forms by... Losing electrons. Okay, so if you can have a cation, you can also have an anion. So an anion is a negatively charged ion. Negatively, just want to spell it right, charged ion, and that forms by gaining electrons. Okay. So this is nitrogen, has seven protons, seven neutrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons, so it's neutral, it's a nitrogen atom. This has seven protons, seven neutrons, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten electrons. So ten electrons. This one had seven electrons, so that's what makes it neutral. This has ten electrons, so it's N with a three negative charge, because that's three extra electrons. Oh, look, they're blue. Okay. So it's just some definitions and how they happen. All right, so what information does the periodic table tell you, or, or me, or us? PT stands for periodic table. Periodic table, right? Um, well, this number, the whole number that is given for each element tells how many protons it has, okay? So how many protons does nitrogen have? Boom, seven, you guessed it, all right? Um, if nitrogen's an atom, it also has seven electrons, all right? You can also know the symbol and the name, and then this average atomic mass, and some periodic tables even have electronegativity at the bottom. Okay. What does this mean? What does this mean? So the U is the X, and that's the chemical symbol for the element. So you could look this up. The U is uranium. uranium. Oh, good. Now you have one memorized. U is uranium. This top number is called the mass number. Okay. What makes up the mass of an atom is its nucleus, its protons and its neutrons. So the mass number is going to be equal to the protons plus 
the neutrons. Because what makes an atom heavy? The nucleus. What's in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. The top number is mass number. Bottom number is called Z. And Z equals protons. Atomic number protons. So uranium has a mass number, mass number of 238 and atomic number of 92. Okay. So it has 92 protons and then um, 238 minus 92 is, can you guys do that again? I'm going to put on the calculator just to make sure. 338 minus 92, and boom, I get 146 equals 146 neutrons, okay? Because so what makes up the mass number of protons and neutrons, protons are the same as atomic number, so then I find out that this uranium has nine, 146 neutrons, okay? So this is some notation they're going to have to know. It's called isotopic notation. We'll find out what an isotope is in a second. But in an isotopic notation... You have the name of the element, this is an example, example, sodium, and then a dash, and the dash is always pointing to the mass number, okay, mass number, element name. So, this is the isotopic name of sodium 23. The symbol for that the example, and I'll use the same one, is you write the symbol of the element. Right? Sodium symbol is Na. And then the mass number goes on the top, and the atomic number goes on the bottom. But wait, it doesn't tell me the atomic number here. Luckily, you have a periodic table. You find Na on the periodic table, and you find out that its atomic number is 11, so that goes down there. Okay, so atomic number, mass number, mass number, and then symbol. So this is the sodium-23 isotope. This is the name of it. That's the symbol of it. Woo! All right. So if you get the symbols of isotopes, you're going to have to decide, is it an atom or is it an ion? So let's play right now. Um, so we're looking at this, and we don't see any charge on it, so that means it's an atom. Okay. Let's look at this one. Okay. You see the symbol, the mass number, the atomic number, and look, there's a charge. So this is an ion. You see if you can do the rest, right, to say atom or ion. Oh, look, cat ion are positive. Ah, pause, cat ion, okay. So how can we look at the symbol of an isotope and figure out what it's, what's in there? So protons, neutrons, and electrons. Again, I'll show the symbols. Um, so we look at this, and we see this number down here. That's definitely protons. So it has seven protons. Now, this number is the mass number. Mass number is protons and neutrons, protons plus neutrons. So we already know there's seven protons, so it must be five neutrons to equal 12. So neutrons equals five. Now, there's no charge up here, so it's a neutral atom, so that means the electrons also have to be seven. Okay. Uh, let's look at this one. We have um, the element's oxygen. Oh. And then we know that there are eight protons. Protons is atomic number is eight. So there's eight protons in the nucleus. And then neutrons is this is protons plus neutrons added together. So eight plus eight equals 16. So there must be eight neutrons. This is a charge. And it's a negative charge. And electrons are negative. So oxygen atoms are neutral with eight protons and eight electrons. This has an extra two electrons. That's how it gets its negative charge, so it has 10 electrons. Okay. Why don't you guys try that one and see what you get. All right, so we can do the same thing if we see the name of an isotope, but you might want to convert it into its symbol first. So chromium might take you a while to find it, but chromium symbol is CR, and this 52 goes up here because it's always dashed to the mass number, mass number goes up. So then we need atomic number. So you had to look on the periodic table for the element chromium, and you find it in space, number 24 on the periodic table. So that means we have 24 protons, and there's no charge. It doesn't say anything about charge or that it's an ion, so there must be 24 electrons. Notice I, I'm doing a different thing now. 
Um, on the last slide, I did neutrons next, but now I did electrons next. And so then neutrons would be 52 minus 24, 12, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 28, 28 neutrons. Okay, so um, you could do a little math and figure that out, right? Um, I'm going to do potassium ion. You guys try neon. Okay, so potassium ion. We'll find the symbol on the periodic table. Dash to the mass number goes up. So down here we need this uh, atomic number potassium, which is 19. Now I'm going to tell you that potassium is a plus one ion. And I know this has a charge because it says ion right here. So we know it's going to have a charge. You'll find out later why potassium has a plus one charge. Okay, so now we know that there's 19 protons because that's what makes it potassium. That's its nucleus. Protons in the nucleus. Um, let's say because we have this plus one charge, instead of having 18, 19 electrons, it's got an extra proton in its nucleus compared to the number of electrons. That's why there's less electrons. And then 40 minus 19 is 21 neutrons. You try, Neon. You try. Hey. Right? Okay. Ah! I'll just stop right there. It's kind of funny. All right. So, we know that atoms can turn into ions, but do all atoms of an element, are they exactly the same? Well, no. There's a thing called isotopes. Okay, isotopes, um, all oxygen atoms would look the same. If you're holding oxygen in your hands, that'd be interesting because it's a gas. But if you had a bunch of oxygen, some oxygen that you have would be oxygen 16, some oxygen would be oxygen 17, and some would be oxygen 18. So what are some differences between those? Well, and what are some similarities? Well, all oxygen has eight protons. All right, that's what makes it oxygen. But this oxygen over here has a mass number of 16. This oxygen right here has a mass number of 17. And this oxygen over here has a mass number of 18. What's the diff? Well, we know there's eight protons in all of them. So that means these three um, atoms have different numbers of neutrons. And when you have atoms of the same element that have different number of neutrons, they're called isotopes. Okay? Isotopes. Atoms of the same element, of the same element, with varying numbers of neutrons. So their nuclei are a little bit different. This is the heaviest isotope of oxygen listed, and this is the lightest isotope of oxygen listed. So what do these percentages mean? Again, if you're holding a bunch of oxygen in a balloon, most of the oxygen atoms in that balloon would be oxygen 16. Some of the atoms of oxygen in the balloon would be oxygen 17, and some would be oxygen 18. So if we look at this, another symbol on, of the periodic table, we said atomic number, we said uh, name, we said symbol, but this number right here is called an average mass. So let's talk about what average means. Well, let's just say the class average for chemistry is 71.2356. Well, that doesn't mean any one person in the class has exactly 71.2356. It's um, this number is an average of all of the scores in the class. Okay, uh, this number is an average of all the scores in the class. This number is an average of the weights of all the isotopes. But it's not your everyday average. It's called a weighted average. So let's look at why. Um, so. If you look at a periodic table, oh, look, it's part of a periodic table. Here's the symbol. Here's the atomic number. I said here's the symbol. That's a name, atomic number, symbol. And this is the average atomic mass of aluminum. So what kind of isotopes does aluminum probably have? Well, it probably has an isotope that has a mass of 26, mass number of 26, and an isotope that has a mass number of 27. But out of these two isotopes, which one do you think most aluminum is? Well, since this atomic mass will round up to 27, 27 is probably the most abundant, most abundant isotope of um, okay. silicon. Actually, has three isotopes. So, so find a chunk of silicon in your house, and probably some of it's silicon 27, silicon 28, and silicon 29. Okay. But what do you think the most common isotope of silicon is? Well, here's its average, and look, the average is closest to 28. So that might be the most common isotope of silicon. 
Argon, remember? Pirate's favorite element, Argon. Okay. Um, he has an uh, uh, atomic, average atomic mass of 39.948. So it has isotopes that have a mass of number of 40 and 39, but what is probably the most common? Well, probably 40 is the most common. Most common or most of them. Um, I want you to predict, predict what the most abundant isotope of phosphorus, chlorine, and sulfur are. Okay? And then we'll see. All right. So how do they get that number on the periodic table? Well, they find the average atomic mass. But you can't just add up all of these masses and divide by three because you have to take into account that most of the element is, like, so for this, these are three isotopes, right? And these are the atomic mass units of them. And... Here's the percentage of them, right? So this is a percent. So if I took a straight average, I'd be thinking that this, this, and this all add in the same amount to the average of the atoms. But since 99% of the isotopes have this mass, then we have to do a weighted average. Okay, so it's a weighted average. And the weighted average, you're going to take the mass of isotope, isotope, times its percent abundance, change to decimal. So then you're um, accounting for that percentage uh, that weighs that much. And then you're going to take, we'll call that isotope 1. This will be isotope 1. And then plus, you're going to have to take the mass of another isotope, times its percent abundance changed to a decimal, plus dot, dot, dot. So this table right here represents three isotopes of an element. So we'd have to do this um, mass times the percent, change to a decimal, boom, boom, two places over. If you multiply those together, you get 15.95. Six oh five. I'll plug that in the calculator. And then the mass of a second isotope times its percent abundance changed to a decimal boom boom is equal to 0.0647. Right. And then the mass of a third isotope, see this dot dot dot, you have to keep doing it until you run out of isotopes. Uh, move your decimal point boom boom, change to a decimal, and you get 0.03. Six, eight, nine, eight. So now what do you do? Well, you take the mass times the percent plus the mass times percent. So i got to add all of these together. And I get, I'll go down here to show you, 15.999418. So you might be saying to yourself, self, what element is this that has an average atomic mass of 15.999418 AMU? Well, you can check the periodic table and guess what you find? Boom, oxygen. And so look, I calculated the average atomic mass based on the mass of each isotope times its percent abundance, and it came out to be the average atomic mass from the periodic table. So why do you think on some periodic tables you'll see 16.00 as the average atomic mass? Well, this rounds to 16.00. Look, it's another data table. I want you to calculate, calculate uh, average. Atomic ever. That's a V E R A G E. Come on. Calculate average atomic mass for this, um, for that data up there. Okay? And then when you do, I want you to tell me what element it is. Good luck. Go get them. All right. So remember, there's some book connections. So you can read through there, find some examples, and then I wonder what pairs are made of. So here's some of the things that hopefully you learned about and that you can do after this.